Hello everyone, today we are going to learn about error boundaries. So in React 16.8, error boundaries were introduced and this is a good way of reducing duplicate code um, because as you know, applications sometimes can have errors and the user needs to know what happened. Um, so this, this is a good way of putting those error displays in a single place and you can use them basically everywhere in your application. So let's get started. So if you watched my previous video, you would have seen this UI here on the right side. The only difference is that I've just added a little bit of CSS, but everything in here is almost the same. Uh, one change that has been made is that if we go and open the article search component, uh, we call this use data hook now, in some cases, this use data will throw an error and it'll put the error in this error variable. So earlier we were just displaying error, so we can try that here. So here in this case, on the second try, there was an error. Now, we can either keep it this way, but you know, our, there might be errors in other places of our application, so we can make use of error boundaries in this case. So what we'll do is basically take this out and we want the, the display of the error to be handled in the error boundary. So let's create a new file in our folder here. Call it error boundary. We'll import React. And in this case, we need to create a, a class component. The reason is the only way to create an error boundary is with a class component today. In all other cases, you can use something called a function component. If you want to learn more about that, you can watch my previous video. And class components, as you know, take a render method, um, which will return something. Uh, for now, we'll just keep it at null. Uh, so let's also create an interface. This is something that you want to do for all of your uh, components. So in, we need to create an interface for the props and the state. So error boundary props and the same thing will go for the state. Now our props and state are empty, uh, but one thing that I can think of in the state is a message, right? So an error message it can, can be stored in the state of this uh, component. So we'll just store it as a string for now. Um, and since we have a state, we need to initialize it with a constructor. And for the message default, we'll just put it as an empty string since that's what the type is. All right, so our render method now obviously needs to change based on what the state is. So we'll just do a quick check in the render method. If this.state.message, then we wanna render basically an error, right? Error, otherwise we should just render um, our, the children. So we'll return this dot props dot children. Now remember, pro children come with all all components that you create because the, it it's just something that's extended from React dot component, and we don't need this return, return null anymore. All right. So how do we actually get this error message in this class? Well, there's two new methods that you can use. Uh, one is a static method. It's called get derived state from error. And this will take two arguments. Uh, one will be, sorry, this one will take one argument and the next method is called component did catch. Now this one will take two arguments. One is the error and the other is error info. Uh, for this video, we'll only use the error, so we'll skip this one. All right, so what do we do in both of these methods? Well, in this method, we need to return the new state of our component. So what will be the new state? Well, we can't have the empty string, right? So we need to return an object which will represent our state. So the message will be error.message, kind of like how we had in our previous article search. We just displayed the message. Um, and in the component did catch, you could do anything else that you need to do. Um, one thing that we sh we can add is uh, in the props, we can have an on air handler. So this will be maybe an air, a generic air, 
which will return void. So this will be passed in from the parent component, whoever decides to use the error boundary. Um, and we can make it maybe optional. Uh, so basically in the component did catch, if, if we have an on error handler passed in, then all we can do is just call it with the error. So what do we actually display in this error? A, maybe just a regular div. So we'll return a div with a class name. And inside of the div, there are two things that we can do. Uh, one is obviously display the message. So we can get that from the state. The other thing we can do is add a button to this component. And what this button will be responsible for is a retry. So on click of this button, uh, we can call a function. So let's create that function up here. We'll call it handle retry. And it'll this will be an error function so that we can still use the this variable. Um, and what we should do is probably call something in the props, but we don't actually have that yet. So we'll have to add, add a function called on retry which will be responsible for letting the parent know, just like on air, that there has been a, a retry triggered. So it can do whatever it needs to do. For example, recall an API or mount the component again. So in our button, what we should do is call this dot handle retry or not call, but actually just give it a reference so that uh, React can call it when the person clicks on it. Let's add our button tag again. And in here, we can just say try again. What we've done so far, we've created a class component with two, two props and one state variable. So we need a constructor and we set the message to be an empty string, which is falsy. Um, so we can do our check here if this.state.message and that'll be false if it's empty. Then we display some divs, which will represent our error message. So the message comes in from the state and we have a button with the click handler for retry. So we call the props uh, callback for that. And we have two new methods, one called get derived state from error, which will actually return the state that we expect it to be in when you have an error. And the next one is component did catch, which is for any other um, callbacks that you need to make or if you need to, for example, log to server. Right now we are not actually using this component ever. So let's let's try to use that. Now if we go to our app component, remember we still have our article search displayed, but we removed all the errors from the DOM in the article search. So what we'll do is add our error boundary here and we need to actually import it. So let's add that. All right, now nothing has changed. Everything still looks exactly the same, so let's try it out. Let's see what happens if there's an error. Okay, so there's an error. Now no, there's nothing showing basically. Why? Well, we, we have added our divs here with an error message and the message, so it seems like the message is not actually being sent to the error boundary. Um, so let's try to fix that. Well, if we look at it in here, we are not actually using the error message at all. So use data, remember, will set the error to this variable and we need to actually let the error boundary know that there's an error. Now, the reason this happens is because this is asynchronous and we are actually calling this API in this use data hook. So in this case, we need to actually watch the error. So we'll add a use effect here. And what we'll do is actually watch the error. So whenever error changes, this use effect will run. So in this case, we need to check if there is an error, because remember the error could be empty string in, this, in, in which case there is no error. So if there is an error, which is a string, we need to actually throw an error from this component. So we'll do throw new error and we'll just pass it the string error. So let's try that out. Okay, now we can see it's working as expected. We see a button for try again and the error that we actually uh, threw. And when we press try again, nothing happens. Why is that? Well, let's look at our error boundary. 
So if we see retry is actually calling this function and then it just calls the prop. But what we also should do here is set the state to have error as nothing. So message will again go back to empty string. And if we press retry now, we get our results back. You can have your errors look all the same. So what we can do is add a new CSS file here and target this class, which we've created in our error boundary called error message, right? So if we add a dot, we can target that class name. And what we can do is add some basic styles. So we'll add some padding and we can add a background color. And I've already kind of picked out a color for this. It's kind of like a light red. Um, we'll add the color as black for the text. And we can maybe also add some border radius so that it looks nice and round. All right, so we all we have to do is import the CSS file up at the top here. And let's see how that looks. That looks great. In this case for us, this was an exception which we have to actually implement. Um, some other limitations are event handlers. So for example, in our error boundary, we have this on click handler. Now, if there's an error in this case, in, in one of these statements, it, error boundaries will not catch it. The other limitation is the error boundary itself. So any errors in this error boundary will not be caught by itself. Um, the other exception also is asynchronous code. So for example, API calls that you uh, make, in that case, your API call will, will most likely return a promise. So in your catch block, you'll have to probably throw another error in the component. And the last case is server-side rendering. So any server-side rendered code will not work with error boundaries. If you'd like to learn more about this, you can check out some links in the description and read everything about this on my blog. If you'd like more videos like this, please subscribe and leave a comment if you'd like to see something different or if you have a suggestion. Um, see you in the next video.